So let me ask you, where does where does hip hop come into play in this story? Like how were you how were you first introduced to hip hop? Um living in Trenton cuz I you know back in the days things moved a little bit slower and you know right you, Trenton's not that far away but you know it's but a, we it's, have a, it's, it's <laughs> yeah and, and it's not like y'all had yeah, the, the yeah, benefit yeah. of being close enough to right. um to leech off of the radio stations of New York and all of that again that like Newark and all of those was able to do the um Right, we you know we WHBIs and all of that, right? And maybe the, the, right. The, the KTUs and the you know what I mean, BLS right. and all of that type of shit. So, so number one, my first part of the question is, when were you first um, introduced to hip hop? And then a question that I like to ask all artists is, and then when did you go from being a fan to being a participant? Right. My introduction to hip hop was with Sugar Hill Gang, the vinyl, mm. you know, uh, my brothers. I thought that would be vinyl. your answer. Yeah, that that was it. You know, uh, that record, the whole neighborhood was into that. When that record came out, it was the first time we heard anything, you know, remotely speaking to us. Mm. You know what I mean? In, in music form, you know, so that that partic that particular record set it for us, you know. So we all knew all the words to the Sugar Hill Gang records, you know. We didn't know Kaz wrote, <laughs> was writing the right, lyrics. Right, right, you know right. I mean? We didn't know that part. And I don't know if we would have cared, but right. <laughs> at the time, <laughs> like. Right. We, it, it was what it was. Yeah, you man, know, we uh, loved Big Bad Hank back oh, then. Oh, absolutely. Yo. So, you know, that was it. So as the years progress, you know, and, and more records start to be released, you know, uh, Sugar Hill Gang, then Run DMC, you know, and you know, but even you know the Houdinis, the you know, all all the classic artists, man, of Jekyll and Hyde's, Spoonie you know, G, all of them, you know, right, Treacherous Three, right. So Fucking then you know, Fearless Four, absolutely. So then we started getting shows like Graffiti Rock, you know, in the eighties. You know, we had gra Graffiti Rock show. We had then we had the movies come out, the Break In. Beat you know, Street. the Beach Street joint, the Wild Style, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Style Wars, you know, so after that, it was, oh, it was a rap after that. So I was doing everything in hip hop pretty much except DJ. And I never, I was never a DJ. You know, I regret that. I regret Man, not learning how to DJ. I did you know? it all, brother. You know what I mean? I, I did you know, it all. As a matter of fact, thing. DJing was my, that's how I really got in. Like I started as a DJ and like, got into the MC and shit afterwards, but that's, yeah. Right, yeah, I was graffiti art, I, you know, graffiti, the whole break dancing thing, you know, it's a young kid, you know, uh, me and Culture used to make tapes. We, we we would play the instrumentals, the vinyl on the on the stereo. Mm -hmm. We play the vinyl and the radios with the little mic on it, and you push record and play. And play Come on, pause time. tapes. We was the pause, ma I was the master of the pause tape. Are you kidding me? No, you know what I mean? So you That's couldn't. What we had to up. do. You know what I mean? You had to spit. Yeah, you, you know, spit your rhyme to the instrumental wise recording right there. You know what I mean? And go right, walk around away listening to yourself. You know. You know that's that was that was what we did. You know, vinyl break dancing, all that. You know, we we were everywhere. Then I I was carrying records for. T Bone, a DJ in the in the community, you know what I mean? They, T Bone, we used to break dance, you had your break dance crew, you know, and T Bone was a DJ. He used to DJ a lot of block <laughs> parties, you know what I mean? So I used to carry records. I used to go to the show, go to his, his little performances when we would DJ the, the little parties. I carry, carry records, you know, and, and we do what we do. But, you know, that, that was my introduction to hip hop. And then, MCs, the local MCs were my first influences. You know, uh, Charlie Charlie Bean, uh, Omar Superstar, you know, Diamond D, Ammunition Posse. Mm. You know, those guys, they, they were like the MCs that I would listen to and admire, you know, and was inspired by. Did any of them have a kind of style that you feel like 
you know, because man sharpens man, steel sharpens steel. Do you feel like any of them had a style that you might have looked at and then you might have like incorporated it somewhere in your style? I couldn't say that. I would like to. I would like to. I mean, because I, I mean, I'm sure I, somebody I else would you. like to, too. Like, aha, I told you. <laughs> I told but, you that was my style. You know what I mean? But, you know, not, not necessarily. I mean, they all were original. Right. Each one of them was so original, you know, and that's one of the things that I, that I took away. That was one of the takeaways, you know. Uh, Omar Superstar didn't sound like a Diamond D. Diamond didn't sound like Trey 8. Trey 8 didn't sound like 22. You know what I mean? They all sound different. The whole ammunition policy, their name was like guns. They, you know, they all had a name from a gun of a gun. Uh -huh. You know, they they were solid. They were some of the most solid MCs, you know, and Omar Superstar, you know, and they were all guys. Mm. They were all 5%, all mm. of them. You know, uh, they, were, they were just incredible. They were incredible MCs. They, you know, my some of my first influences. They they inspired me. So more so so else. so maybe not style wise, but the fact that they had a crew that was all gods. Did that kind of help influence the fact that y'all was all god making a hip hop group? You see, what I'm saying like like we, that's we, something we, that already kind of existed around your way, right? So it's like I right, we we gonna be. A, we got we the gods too you know we, you know we were we were guys before we started the group you know we were guys before we started really putting a rap group together you know um but they but the thing is they were they weren't on it that way you know they were they were the ammunition posse right but you know how but, i'm saying but like we some... knew them around the way as gods you know they they would be at the, the rallies and everything you know so and they were building so you know we 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 were just who we were you know we was just who we were we, like we, but some gods would be in a group with with 85s too you see what i'm saying like did y'all just specifically was like yo or you just wasn't really fucking with 85s at that time and and, and so that's how y'all group came about or did y'all consciously say I mean, y'all was the poor, was, righteous teachers. Was, I mean, it was, I mean, a, a lot of the MCs, how did that come about? A lot of the artists in the how did the name come about? The name came about. I mean, I, I mean, culture was just kicking. We was like, yo, we we who, we we poor righteous teachers. <laughs> we the poor righteous teachers. That's that's who we are, whether we rapping or not, you know. Nice. Right, but if you was in a group with an 85, the name might probably not have been that, is what but I'm look, saying. I was in a group with a I was in a group with a guy before that. And, and you know, and we were called magnetic builders, something like that. I can't even remember mm. the whole name, but it was just it was me and another MC. Right. You know, God Godfather, you know, and uh he was a five percent, you know. Culture was in a group called the God Squad. You know, before we even formed Poor Rights Teachers, he was in a group called the God Squad. So, mm -hmm. like all the groups, all the, a lot of the MCs at that time were five percent. That's Trenton. Trenton had a lot of five percenters. You know, absolutely. So, so y'all came together. Um, you, Coach of Freedom, Father Shahid. Rest in peace. Um, you know, how did y'all end up like getting to the point where y'all got a record deal and all that? How did that manifest itself? We, me and Culture, you know, we were we were rocking since we were like 11, 12. You know, so when when I moved into Violent, Culture was already living in Violent. Then I end up moving into Violent, unfortunately. <laughs> Fortunately, Divine Land, for those that don't know, is is low. The Donnelly Homes Low Income Housing Projects, North Side of Trenton. Okay. You know, uh, so when I moved out there, me and Culture started recording together. You know, Culture was the Culture was a DJ producer. Culture was the MC. Culture was doing a lot. You know, Culture was just a hip hop dude. You know, um, and you know, and he was in the streets at the same time. You know, Culture. You know, it was in the streets, you know, it's, it's what it was. So we were, we were transitioning. 
it was that moment, it was that point where we were transitioning from the streets to try something different, you know, right. so me and Culture was recording together, you know, so we started recording, we started making records, we needed a DJ, you know, uh, we had a DJ named Divine, you know, D Divine, you know, for his reasons, he was no longer part of the group by the time we met Shah. Mm. So then Shahid became the DJ and we started making records. You know, we said, you know, Coach was like, yo, we're going to bet it all on a studio. Now, now, what do you mean, though, we started making records? Like, like how you just decide, all right, we're going to just start making records, like, especially right. back we, then. Like, like, right, we started, you know, we were like, you know, we wanted to go in the studio. Here's the thing. We were, it was groups already making records. Two Cool Posse was a group that had signed the Profile Records already. My man, Gino G, who was my partner in Intelligent Music Group today, He's uh he was one of the first MCs on vinyl in my neighborhood. So mm. and and one of one of the MCs that inspired me, you know, so they had vinyl, you know, they were putting vinyl. So we were like, yo, why not us? You know what I mean? We like, you know, why not us? So we had to go in the studio. So culture introduced me to Tony D. Right. So mm -hmm. Tony D came around with Tony D was the producer who was putting all these artists out. He was producing all these artists, okay. you know. Um, he was and, from Trenton, or he just was out there. He, yeah, he was from Trenton, but he moved from Trenton, and at this point, he had he had already moved out of Trenton. He was living in Ewing, a town a township of mm -hmm. Trenton, you know. So, culture was like, you know, let's let's let him set up a battle, or whatever. So, Tony D thought he could rap or whatever. He thought he could rap, but he couldn't rap really. You know what I mean? So, of course, I'm, I'm battling. And then he's like, yo, let me do some beats for y'all or whatever. And me, I mean, we like, I will right, check out some tracks, whatever. So checked out some tracks, gave us some tracks, whatever. We, it's like, all right. So me and Coach was like, yo, one day we were like, yo, we sold everything, sold all the equipment. Coach had mad equipment. We had mad equipment at Coach's house. He had mad equipment. He sold everything. Coach sold his equipment. We had, the, we had stopped. I wasn't selling weed no more. I was working at some little factory or some shit, making cardboard boxes or some shit. Like, <laughs> so we took everything we had, every every dime we had, and we said, we're going to go in the studio. We're going to bet on us. We're going to bet on this studio session. So we paid for studio time, and we went in the studio with our own loops, with our own vinyl, our own mm. samples. You know what I mean? We had a drum drop record, a drum drop record with the time to say piece original on it. You mm. know, so that boom to boom, that same shit that sold the soul used and everybody used, you know, we used it first. We were like, yo, we're going to go and use this drum drop record. We're going to do this record. We're going in the studio. So we were in the studio. When we were in the studio. Tony D called the studio because it was the studio that he recorded all the time. And he was like, yo, I'm going to come through. I'm going to let y'all hear some beats. He came through. He let us hear some beats. We were like, yo, all right. We recorded. We recorded Tana Say Peace. Butt Naked Booty Bless, Word is a Bomb. Mm. We recorded all three of those records that day. Went, after that, we went to Tony D's house and got more beats. Rock the Swunky Joint, the Slipping in the Darkness beat was the last beat we got. Mm. You know what I mean? But, and, and you know, Tony ain't like the, he didn't like it. He was just playing vinyl. You know, he was playing vinyl. We were like, yo, that's it. You know, well, culture. Culture was like, yo, that's the track right there. That's the track. Loop that. Let's let's rock that, mm. you know what I mean? and that's what we did. And so we we put the single out. The first three songs we put them on. On we went in the studio. We had the the quarter inch. You know, back then we had tape. You know, so we had the quarter inch tape, and we like yo, put our record out. So we went to this label that Tony D was affiliated with called Diversity Records. It was YZ. Oh YZ, wow, YZ label. YZ, peace right? To YZ. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Shout out to YZ. It, you know. YZ and uh, his partner, Tim Baylor from Trenton, they had this label called Diversity Records and they were going to put the single out. So we were like, all right, bet, let's put the single out. Mm. So so we waiting, you know what I mean? They holding our, our quarter inch tape all mixed down. We like, yo, what's up? We, we, you know, we felt like they were moving too slow. We, we were hungry. We wasn't that smart when it came to music business. You know, we was just we were making black music. We didn't understand white business. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you didn't understand the diversity. 
Right. Yeah. And diversity <laughs> records. <laughs> <laughs> that part yeah. so so you know they they would take it too long so we like yo give us our tape back you know what i mean run the tape we we we're gonna do it ourselves you know what i mean so his partner why his partner didn't want to give up the tape you know he wanted you know he like you know he didn't understand that we were who we were we were from where we were from right you know we were gonna come up in your house and beat your ass up or whatever yeah, we gotta I mean, do and we're gonna get that tape exactly we we're gonna upset your mama and them and it was gonna be what it was gonna be and you don't you know want to do that you don't want to do that yeah you know i mean so he handed the tape through the screen door you know what i mean so we took the tape went around the way got with iq gray who's also from donley holmes from Von land and he put it on north side records his label we uh you know the first single was financed by the streets was financed by the block you know that's how we paid for vinyl that's how we paid for the cassettes you know mm -hmm. and um and we put and we put it on vinyl iq took it up to new york you know what i mean you had to take it to new york you know he took it to new york took the vinyl to red alert mm. red alert Heard and that's it. back when you could take your shit to Red Alert. It's crazy. And, and and like he'll be on the radio. He'll listen to you. If you can get up there into the fucking to that BLS room or whatever the case may be, he'll listen to your shit real quick. Give it a yay and nay. And by the time you get downstairs in your car, you'll hear your fucking it's record on the radio. radio. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Those times, I don't, I mean, you can't, I don't know what the right. fuck. Like, that was just a totally different The DJ different time. was the program director. The DJ was the For program real. director. For real. And, and like, you could have been coming out of nowhere, kind of, but, and, and he was giving shit a shot. And he had that ear that instantly, nah, uh-uh. Or, Absolutely. you know, yeah, I right, I'm going to throw that on and see what Absolutely. it, you know what I mean? Exactly. And then he did us one better. He, he took the record to the label and said, yo, this. Wow. And then they called us, you know what I mean? So I think he gave the record to Dan Charnez at Profile, you know, but that's, that's how that happened. You know, that's, that's how we ended up putting out records, you know, 